Hey everyone, in this lesson I'm going to talk to you guys about purine synthesis and metabolism. I'm also going to tell you guys about what purines are, why they are important. I'm also going to tell you guys about some of the differences between purines and pyrimidines, um, and more specifically the differences between purine and pyrimidine synthesis. And I'm also going to tell you guys about um, some of the drugs that are also used um, to inhibit purine synthesis as well. So to get started, what are purines? Well, purines are, um, as um, pyrimidines are, they are nitrogenous bases. They are six-member rings, but they are fused to a five-member ring as well. Um, and purines are the uh, adenine and guanine are purines. Now, um, here are the structures for adenine and guanine. Now, you, as you can see, the main difference between purines and pyrimidines are that purines are six-member rings fused to a five-member ring, whereas pyrimidines are just six-member rings. Um, and I, as I mentioned before in the pyrimidine synthesis video that um, pyrimidines are easy to remember by um, the mnemonic cut the pyramids. So C-U-T, cut the pyramids. Um, so think about that guys when you, um, if you're ever confused about what is a purine, what is a pyrimidine. Now um, a, a kind of a way I remember which, um, which is, um, you know, six member fused to a five member ring is that I always think purine, pure. I always think for some reason I, I help, it helps me remember that um, purine um, reminds me of pure, which reminds me of something that's, you know, more complete um, or more complex, um, six member fused to a five member ring. So um, what are purines used for? Well, purines are used for DNA synthesis. Um, they are also used as energy carrier molecules such as ATP and GTP, as we all know. Um, it's also used for something um, very important known as S-adenosyl methionine or SAM, which is used in some of the biosynthetic pathways for certain um, hormones. Now, um, purine synthesis requires um, several things just like pyrimidine synthesis does. Um, it requires glutamine. Um, it requires uh, glycine. Now, this is the, uh, a big difference between purine and pyrimidine synthesis is that purines require glycine um, for their synthesis. Um, purines also require aspartate. Um, and tetrahydrofolate, vitamin B9, just like pyrimidine. So again, vitamin B9 is very important for both purine and pyrimidine synthesis. So how does it all start? Again, well, we start with the pentose phosphate pathway in, in purine synthesis, and um, pentose phosphate pathway produces ribose 5-phosphate, which then gets um, processed into 5-phosphoribosyl 1-pyrophosphate, or PRPP, via the enzyme PRPP synthase, again, and then, as I mentioned before, PRPP synthase is inhibited by ADP and GDP and activated by inorganic phosphate. Now, this is where it gets a little bit different, guys. Um, as we learned in pyrimidine synthesis, um, PRPP actually gets um, utilized directly, but with purine synthesis, it needs to be processed further. Now, um, purines, uh, the purine synthesis pathway, um, one of the main enzymes, one of the most important enzymes in the pathway is this enzyme, glutamine PRPP amidotransferase. Um, and what it does is it, it actually um, utilizes glutamine um, to um, add an amine group to the PRPP to result in 5-phosphoribosyl-1 amine. Um, in the process, it converts glutamine to glutamate. And um, as I mentioned before, this enzyme, glutamine PRPP amidotransferase, is the um, first committed step. It's the most important enzyme I want you guys to remember for purine synthesis because it is the first committed step in purine synthesis. Now, this enzyme is actually inhibited by AMP, GMP, and IMP, some of the products of the purine synthesis pathway. Um, and the next several steps, I'm just going to quickly go through what is required for the step. I'm not going to actually um, get you guys to remember all the steps because it's very complex. There's about there's actually 14 steps in the purine synthesis pathway, but all I want you guys to know is what is required for the pathway. So the first step after the 5 phosphoribosyl one amine, you require glycine and ATP. Now this is where glycine is important. Um, the next step requires um, uh, tetrahydrofolate. The next step requires glutamine. Another step requires ATP. Another step requires CO2. Um, another step requires aspartate and ATP again. Um, another step requires um, tetrahydrofolate or derivative again, and all leading to a dehydration reaction and the production of uh, inosine 5 prime monophosphate or IMP. Now, um, you guys may want to uh, look this up on your own to see um, you know, each step, but really the important point I want to get across is that 
um, what is needed or what is required for the purine synthesis pathway. And as I mentioned before, glycine is required, glutamine, aspartate, and um, uh, N10 formal tetrahydrofolate um, and a couple ATPs are all required for um, um, purine, um, the purine pathway um, into the production of IMP or inosine 5 prime monophosphate. Now, as I mentioned before, um, the formal tetrahydrofolates or tetrahydrofolate is actually produced by dihydrofolate reductase enzyme, which is actually inhibited by methotrexate and imenopterin. Um, and this is um, where these drugs will actually act in the purine synthesis pathway to suppress the purine synthesis um, and it is used, um, um, as I mentioned before, methotrexate is used as a common chemotherapy drug and as um, uh, utilized uh, for medical abortions as well. Now once you have IMP, what can happen is it can be um, actually, IMP can actually be processed into AMP um, utilizing the amino acid aspartate. So. Um, an easy way to know that, easy way to remember that is IMP to an AMP, A, um, aspartate starts with an A, um, and AMP starts with an A. That's how I remember it, guys. So AMP, um, um, IMP to AMP requires aspartate um, amino acid. And then AMP can actually be processed to ADP, which then can be processed to ATP. Um, IMP can then also go different down a different uh, route, a different pathway. Um, it can actually be processed into GMP um, via the um, utilization of the amino acid glutamine. And again, that's an easy way to remember it, guys. Um, GMP, glutamine. Uh, glutamine starts with a G, so that's how I remember. The, that's just an easy way to remember um, which amino acid is required. Uh, so once you have GMP, what can happen is um, the GMP will be processed into GDP by the enzyme guanylate kinase, and then GDP will be processed to GTP. Now, AMP and GMP can also come from a different source, and that source is the uh, purine salvage pathway, and I'll talk to you guys about that in just a bit. But just, re just remember, guys, that AMP and GMP can also come from a salvaging pathway as well. So once you have ATP and GTP, they can be processed um, in a couple of steps and be utilized for DNA synthesis. And another thing I want to mention is that inosine 5 monophosphate can actually be metabolized into something known as hypoxanthine. And hypoxanthine, by, by a couple of steps utilizing the enzyme xanthine oxidase, can be uh, actually metabolized into uric acid. And that is very important in human health that we'll talk about in another video. So I mentioned the salvage pathway. Now, what is the salvage pathway? What is the purine salvage pathway? Well, um, when you have hypoxanthine, which is derived from IMP, or guanine, um, what can happen is, um, and guanine, by the way, guanine is actually a, a metabolized product of GMP. Now, what can happen is um, uh, hypoxanthine can actually be reprocessed into IMP um, utilizing PRPP, and guanine can be reprocessed into uh, GMP, um, again with PRPP. Now, a common enzyme does um, both of these reactions, and that enzyme is hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribazyl transferase, or HGPRT. Now, that's the uh, enzyme I want you guys to remember that um, hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribazyl transferase, or HGPRT, is the important enzyme in this reaction, and that is um, actually an important uh, enzyme in certain um, genetic disorders as well, and I'll mention that in another video. So um, once you have IMP and GMP, IMP can actually be converted into GMP or AMP. Uh, AMP and GMP can actually be, again, brought back into that pathway I just showed you guys in the previous slide and then actually processed into ATP, GTP, and then into uh, utilized into um, DNA synthesis or into um, utilization as energy-carrying molecules. Now, the important things about the purine selfish pathway that I want you guys to know is that um, the purine selfish pathway requires PRPP, which is, again, a product of pentose phosphate pathway. It also um, decreases purine degradation. Now, this is very important, and I'll tell you guys why in the next um, lesson, um, is that um, because you are salvaging these products, you're salvaging hypoxanthine, you're salvaging guanine, they're not being metabolized. They're not going to... Um, they're not going to have to be metabolized and, and degraded into some of the other toxic products such as um, ammonia um, or ammonium 
and the other toxic product, which is uric acid, which I showed you in the previous slide. So because the salvage pathway actually decreases purine degradation, it's very important in human health. And it's because it decreases uric acid. That's one of the main things it does. So it actually decreases uricemia um, or, you know, blood concentration of uric acid. So in patients with hyperuricemia, if they have high levels of uric acid in their blood, this pathway may be affected in some way. And now I'll mention this again in another lesson as well. So all I, all I want you guys to remember is that this pathway is critical for maintaining proper um, uric acid levels in the blood. And in um, cases of some cases of hyperuricemia, this pathway can actually be affected. And in some genetic disorders, this pathway can be affected. And I'll show you this. This will be um, further talked about in the purine and pyrimidine breakdown video um, as well. So anyways, guys, that was a quick video on purine synthesis and metabolism. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.